Welcome everyone, Quistine here on Serious Gaming with my Feral Druid Gearing Up Guide for World of Warcraft The Burning Crusade Classic for Pre-Raid Tier 4 and Tier 5. For Feral Druid tanks, that is. DPS, that's a different subject. And as a tank, your priority should be to focus on increasing your survivability by as much as possible. You will need to get crit immunity as a druid, as with a paladin or a warrior. In your case, you will need 415 defense. Now, defense rating, defense. Paladins and warriors need 490, but you do have health because of talents. So, you need 415 defense to get immune to, uh, to critical blows. You can use defense rating. You can use resilience if you're struggling to get it. And you will struggle because your tier pieces don't actually have defense rating. So it is a problem for a druid to actually get to it. On top of that, as a druid, your priority will be to get as much armor and HP as possible for survivability purposes. And then worry about threat. As a tank, I always feel it is important to focus on increasing your survivability by as much as possible. And once you're comfortable with it, once your healers are comfortable with the damage you're taking, then you start switching out for survivability. Disclaimer though, I've never played the Feral Druid myself. I've played plenty of Warrior, plenty of Paladin, but not so much with Druid. But I do know people I have throughout the years from Retail Burn Crusade, to private server Burning Crusade. And I'd like to give special thanks to Kix from Top Lads for helping me in making this video and for some of the information that he provided, including a fairly extensive gearing list for Feral Druid tanks that you wouldn't really be able to find if you searched on Google. This is a problem with a lot of the information in Burning Crusade because Burning Crusade has never had the same kind of private server community that Vanilla or Raft the Lich King have had. Uh, getting accurate information, especially when it comes to gear, is difficult. There are gear lists from the private, ser private servers that have existed, but those gear lists are completely and horribly inaccurate for what you actually want, for which items are actually best in slot. I see so many people following those gear lists and ending up with horribly geared characters because the people who made those lists didn't really know what they were doing. They just threw items that to them seemed reasonable but aren't actually so the gear list in the description below is a far better one a far more accurate one it's not just about pre-raid gear it's also about raid gear and it should be a great use to you on top of that there is a macro in the description for the usage of consumables in combat as a druid as Anyone who's ever played the Druid to any degree would understand that it can be a problem to use potions during the middle of combat. I recommend having a swing timer, by the way, uh, to handle it, to really get the handle on it, to be able to use consumables between swings. It can help you out uh, quite a bit. So starting with pre-raid gear, this is how your Druid, your Feral Druid, could look like with pre-raid best in slot. There are quite a few PvP options to be aware of. But early on, you're probably going to want to focus on dungeons, on getting attuned to Karazhan and getting a Karazhan as quickly as possible. Helmet, styling, purple, hat. You'll probably craft this yourself, 48 agility, 45 stamina, with the helm enchant from Keepers of Time for 16 defense rating, 17 dodge rating. There are other helm enchants available in the game, but I feel that going for defense rating and dodge rating at the start makes most sense, since it is quite important to get crit immunity at, as a druid. This is probably one of the best helmets in the game pre-raid. There are ones available with the Meta Gem, but do you really care since the Meta Gem that you're probably going to go for is the 18 stamina one? Not really, to be honest. So it's a really solid helm. Uh, gloves. For the gloves, 393 armor, 14 agility, 27 stamina, 26 strength, and an 8 stamina armor kit. Now, there is an enchant available that gives you 15 agility. The problem is that this enchant is expensive. And when you're trying to gear up your druid, when you're trying to gear up a character, you want to just get that uh, quickly over with. And besides, replacing these with the tier five, four gloves is, pretty qu uh, is something that you can do pretty quickly. So is it the priority to get the glove enchant? Probably not. You get these from the first part of the Black Temple Attunement Quest. So the Black Temple Attunement Quest has two major parts, two major chains. The first part of the attunement, the first chain of quests is available at the start and it rewards you these gloves. Belt, Manimal, Kinch. This is from the Cypher of Damnation quest line, one of the Cypher of Damnation quests. 
in Shadowbone Valley, which you need to do to get access to the Trials of the Naru. It's probably the best slot belt pre-raid from an armor, armor perspective because it has 348 armor, 12 agility, 20 uh, free strength, and 24 stamina. So really solid belt. There is a PvP one that's better in other stats, but this one is really good from an armor perspective. Neck, and there are quite a few necklaces, a jewel crafting one, quite a few necklaces. Um, I personally like the Necklace of the Juggernaut just because it has 22 defense rating, 33 stamina, and 19 agility. But it's really the defense rating that makes it worth it because uh, you're going to struggle with defense rating quite a lot early on. Getting a necklace with good amount of defense rating is useful and this one is a solid enough option. Again, other options are available that you might use once you get some raid gear, once defense rating is no longer an issue. Uh, but this is a fairly solid one from Badges of Justice. Uh, shoulders, shoulder pads of assassination from Sephic Hall's uh, normal with the shoulder enchant from Aldor. Really good, a really solid enough option with 25 agility, 25 stamina, 42 attack power, and two gem slots. Going with stamina gems here. Uh, pants, heavy cleft hoof leggings. And the entire set, you want to get the entire set of boots, leggings, and vest because each of these pieces give you um, give you solid armor, give you defense rating, and solid stamina. And you want to go full-on stamina gearing. As stated, my personal preference when it comes to tank gearing is to focus a lot on survivability and then worry about fret. And as a druid, a tank your fret can be pretty solid from the very start. So just be aware of that. These are really great survival options right out of the gate. There's actually some of the best pure survival options uh, in the game early on. Uh, anything else would be basically focusing on fret or, you know, getting some agility, some strength, all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's a trade-off. Whereas these are just purely focused on fret, give you quite a bit of defense rating, which is something you're going to struggle with with uh, your tier pieces. So uh, pants, boots, and vest, and chest piece all of which uh, you should uh, get from Heavy Cleft Tooth. Uh, now, Pants, 40 Stamina, 12 Agility Enchant. You can go with the cheaper one if you so desire. Boots, 12 Agility, though this can be expensive. You could go with Stamina if you so desire. And Vest, well, when it comes to chest uh, options, you could go for 150 Health, or you could go for some other options that are also available. Like you could, for instance, increase your resilience plus 15. Uh, that can help you out if you're struggling with uh, getting crit immunity. You could go with with resilience rating. Um, alternatively, you could just go with plus stats, uh, plus six stats. That could also work out for you. Or 15 uh, defense rating. All of these would be uh, viable. Actually, I'd probably say 15 defense rating would be the better option if you're struggling with that. Uh, cloak, anyway. For him, we've Cloak from the first boss of Mechanar Normal. 390 armor and 35 stamina. So, these pieces, these four pieces are basically armor items with good stamina. The Cloak doesn't have any defense rating, though, but the pants, the boots, the chest, they also have defense rating. So, really solid item to really increase your survivability. Uh, rings. The iron, the first one, and reasonably easy to acquire, the Iron Band of the Unbreakable from Durnhall Normal. 27 stamina, 17 defense rating, and 170 armor. There are rings with armor available from uh, in a pre-raid situation, but they are a lot harder to acquire. They require you to do heroic uh, dungeons. Uh, the second ring, the Ring of Unyielding Force from Badges, 294 armor, 31 stamina, and 22 defense rating. You could swap at least one of these, maybe with the Lower City Exalted Ring, if you care about expertise, it's, since it is an important threat stat. You would be losing some defense, you'd be losing some armor, and survivability is a pretty big concern for a druid early on. Uh, then Trinkets. The first one, Argusian Compass from Underbog Heroic. As a druid, you're probably going to be going Leatherworker. Maybe you could go Engineering and get the Goblin Rocket Launcher or the Gnomish one uh, for Stamina, but probably not, actually. Uh, as a druid, maybe you want to go Enchanting, get your Ring Enchant, something like that. But you're going to have Leatherworking, right? So that kind of limits your options. And Argusian Compass is the Stamina Trinket that you want to go for if you're not an Engineer. The second Trinket is the Andamantite 
figurine from Shadow Labyrinth normal with its 32 defense rating and a significant increase of armor for 20 seconds on use. Uh, it's a fairly solid trinket, but you're probably not going to use it all that much. There are better trinkets available out there uh, for you as a druid, uh, though this one is fairly easy to acquire, so you're probably going to get it anyway since you need to do Shadow Labyrinth anyway to get attuned to Karazhan and doing a couple of runs uh, early on, you know, get re getting revered with Lower City is highly recommended uh, to be able to access heroics. So getting the Adamantai figurine is fairly easy enough to do. Uh, the reason you care about Lower City rep is because you need to do Sephic Hall's heroic to get access to Nightbane and Karazhan. Anyway, Bright Easter's uh, Umber Howl's Collar, uh, uh, 281 armor, 10 agility, 20 strength, 20 to stamina, 12 defense rating. Really solid bracers with like, there's a lot of good blue items that afford druids available uh, pre-raid. The problem for them is that even with these items, they don't quite reach the survivability that they desire, though they will be in a fairly solid shape. Uh, weapon, Earth Warden, extremely powerful weapon, 500 armor, 39 stamina, putting a 35 agility enchant there, uh, 27 defense rating, 24 expertise rating and 700 attack power in cat, bear, dire bear form, and moonkin forms. And then um, idol, idol of brutality, which is easy enough to get. You can get it from vanilla content. I believe it's a BOE drop. Um, no, actually, BOP, my bad. But anyway, you can get this one pretty easily. Not really a hard thing to do. Increases the damage dealt. Uh, by your Maul ability by 50 and your Swipe ability by 10. Fairly solid. The, a better option is one that increases your Lacerate damage. You might want to use that potentially, uh, but you can't do wrong by using the Idol of Brutality. Now, the question with this is, would you be able to get crit immunity with this gear? I think you're actually a bit over it, though I, uh, though it's kind of difficult to, to do the math on that without actually having the gear just because of the way Druids work. You need 415 defense as a druid, as stated, uh, and this should certainly put you over it. Armor-wise, because that is an important thing, like stamina-wise, you're going to have 620, and right now I have 12.7k HP with the gear, with, with just 11 less stamina, so uh, it should give you a good amount of survivability. Armor-wise, you probably are looking at having, like right now, the character has 25.5 uh, with no buffs. And from what WoW Equip is telling me, and WoW Equip can be wrong, but from what WoW Equip is telling me, uh, there would only be like a small difference in armor. Though obviously when you're counting for dire bear form, the difference is much higher. So you're probably looking at 25K armor with that, which should be enough for any boss in the game in tier 4 and even large parts of tier 5. For tier 4, we're looking at something like this. Force at tier 4 is a very powerful force at bonus because it increases your strength in cat by 30 and in bear form it increases your armor by 1400 in bear and dire bear form. Needless to say, this makes the force it very, uh, very good and in fact Tier 4, Force It, is so strong that Tier 4 ends up being stronger than Tier 5. So that's something to keep in mind. I'm not going to go over the pieces. You know, they have they all have high armor. They all have high stats, you know, strength, agility, stamina, and, and some intellect, which is important for power shifting. Um, the, the question is, what pieces do you want? Well, you want the helm, you want the shoulders, you want the chest. The question is... Do you want the pants or the gloves? I personally would say the pants are probably the better de the better decision. Now, you're likely going to get the gloves as well uh, early on because they drop from Curator, no problem, right? And the chest drops from McFerrin. You do have actually stiff competition for the chest and the shoulders. Not so much for the pants, but you are going to have competition for the shoulders and for the chest with warriors, with both tank warriors and DPS warriors who will both want them. Uh, though they are quite by far best in slot for you and you'll be using these until tier six 
So uh, at this point with tier four, you probably are still gonna use a lot of stamina gems, but you also may want to use to start using agility gems, right? So uh, go with agility, go with you know mix of gems, like maybe pure agility in some pieces. You also have to account for you know DPS gear, and some items are going to be dual purpose. The problem for you is to do DPS, you're probably going to want another uh, four set of tier four, or maybe some tier five pieces to really do. Uh, solid damage though you know that's a discussion for another time but anyway so you're going to want the helm you're going to want the shoulders you're going to want the chest and you're going to want the pants neck barb choker of discipline you could still use you could use the tire of the deep you could use the badge uh, neck you shouldn't really focus on this but in terms of raid drops the barb choker of discipline is a really solid neck piece but the thing is it's not as important for you as a Feral Druid as it is for a Warrior or a Paladin. So you really shouldn't be prioritized for it. But you can't do wrong using it. There might just be better pieces uh, to use out, out there, like the Jewel Crafting uh, Crafted Neck. Anyway, gloves. Now, this is where we get into a bit of a discussion. Grips of Deafness. They're not really solid tanking items, right, from a survival perspective. The ones I linked before are probably better from a pure survival uh, perspective just because they have more armor. But they have 29 agility, 34 stamina. The important bit here is that they have 15 expertise. And maybe, the, maybe Blizzard doesn't implement expertise at the start, but even if they don't, you should still pick, pick these up because that expertise is enormously powerful for anyone that is a me melee for any tank, for a warrior, for a druid, for any melee DPS, you are going to have heavy competition for this, but probably not so much. And, you know, you're a druid, you're going to be doing Karazhan, you'll be doing Karazhan quite a lot. You should be able to at least get one of these gloves for yourself. And you want to put the agility enchant, and you're certainly going to want to use these for DPS purposes. Uh, belt, Girdle of Treachery, uh, with... 18 agility, 37 stamina. There is a bear belt, I believe, from Gruul. The thing about that is 25-man rating situation, competition, all of, all of that it entails, right? In a 25-man rating situation, when you have hunters, when you have more melee to com consider, when you have quite, quite stiff competition, it is going to be a problem. It's better to rely on pieces like these, or PvP pieces like the General's uh, Leather Belt, as an example. If I bring that up, uh, like uh, the General's Leather Belt, for instance, you could use that as an example. But the one that was there uh, what is probably better. Like the Leather Belt, yeah, you can farm for it, you can get it, you can get a lot of PvP pieces, and they're fairly solid. And it's important with the Leather Belt here that you can use Resilience as a stopgap for, uh, for situations where you might not have defense rating. Anyway, Boots, Edgewalker, uh, Long Boots. From Morose in Karazhan. And if you get these, you're probably going to want to use them for DPS. So gem them for DPS, enchant them for DPS. Like I put an 8th agility gem and then a 4 hit for agility gem for the extra free hit rating. Hit does matter for you. Uh, so 29 agility, 28 stamina. If you can get two of these, though that's fairly difficult, but if you can get two of these, um, that would actually work out quite well for you. You know, one of them for tanking, one of them for DPS. But if you only get one, for, enchant them for DPS, you should be fine tanking-wise, and yes, use them for tanking. And if you are struggling, you can always use Cleftoof, right? In the few situations where it might actually be needed. Uh, Cloth, gold... Uh, Gilded uh, Forium Cloak, I believe it's from Elhoof. Anyway, free, uh, anyway, it's from Karazhan. Uh, 385 armor, 30 stamina, 12 agility, 24 defense rating. Now, it's the defense rating that makes this better than the Mechanar uh, normal cloak, right? It's not the armor, it's not the stamina. It's really just having that extra defense rating that does help. It's a very useful cloak. You might be using a DPS cloak a lot of the time just for fret purposes, but from a survival standpoint, this is really the, the best option. Uh, Sharamar uh, Great Ring, I believe from uh, Shade of Iran. 223 armor, 36 stamina, 23 defense rating, really solid item. Warriors and Paladins won't really care about this. They have other priorities, other rings that they want to use um, themselves. Like they probably want to use the Architraz ring. 
uh, for the most part from a survival standpoint and warriors certainly want to use the lore city exalted ring so you shouldn't have any real competition for this and the other one the violet signet of the great protector for the 392 armor 37 stamina and 19 defense rating like pure survival rings and at this point with this kind of gear you should get exalt you, sh you should be able to get exalted keepers of time from the uh, for the time lapse shard 27 stamina with a good amount of uh, resilience to help keep you uncritable now i believe that all of this gear would give you uncritable anyway uh, regardless whether or not you use this uh, this one or not but it's useful to get it in situations where hey i want more friend maybe i you know i dump a ring or both rings cloak all that kind of stuff and i still want to be uncritable bracers uh, general's leather bracers i believe that these are the best in slot for druids for a fairly long time i'm not quite sure if they are available at the start that would remain to be seen but if you can get these 25 stamina 19 agility one gem slot 12 defense rating on them though you can go for other option uh, improve critical strike by 7 13 resilience and 16 attack power very useful there a uh, badge of tenacity at this point right you're not going to get badge of tenacity even if it is available early on uh with pre-raid gear because it's it costs a lot of gold but it may not be available but if it is if you can get it whenever it becomes available you should make it your priority to get it it's really powerful from a survival standpoint for a druid 308 armor uh, 150 agility for 20 seconds. Incredible uh, trinket. Morrow's pocket watch is another alternative, or you could go engineering. You're still going to use Earth Warden for uh, tier 4 because it's really powerful due to the expertise rating, and you might get at this point from Underbog Heroic, Idol of Ursok, from uh, um, I believe it's the final boss of Underbog Heroic that this that, that gives you this trinket. But whether or not this uh, th this idol, whether or not this is useful though, depends on whether or not you can use last rate. That's the big question, right? Because you might not be able to. Like bleed bosses might be immune to bleeds. That could be a problem, right? So finally, moving on to tier five, you're not really going to see too many differences here because you're going to still be using tier four uh, four set. So helm, uh, shoulders, chest, pants. You're still uh, going to use Edgewalker boots, the Gilded Forium uh, cloak, plenty of items that you already had from Tier 4. I, that's the situation, by the way, for Paladins and for quite a few people that there are some gear upgrades in Tier 5, but there aren't many because, hey, maybe Tier 4 is best in slot for me until Tier 6. I'm not going to bother with Tier 5, and that's the situation for quite a few people. Though there are some upgrades, more so from a threat perspective than a survival perspective. Um, neck. The Frayed Tether of the Drowned from Carafres, 45 stamina, 24 defense rating, and 18 defense, uh, 18 hit rating. Whether or not this is w worth using is questionable, right? Um, if you want a neck piece that gives you hit rating, there is one available for badges. It's probably more of a warrior item than a druid item, but it's still an avail it's still available as ray drop from tier five. Uh, gloves. Gloves of the Searing Grip from Alar, from Tempest Keep, 252 armor, 33 agility, 20, uh, 37 stamina, 15 agility enchant with 18 expertise and 66 attack power. Now, here is the thing about these gloves. Everyone will want them. Anyone that's a melee DPS will fucking want them because they're best in slot for all of them. So you're going to have in fierce competition. If you can get the Karazhan gloves you probably are going to just end up using them like you know if i was in charge of the loot council like i'd just be giving these to whoever doesn't have the karazhan gloves right to try and keep things reasonable because the karazhan gloves sure they're weaker but they're not that much weaker and they still have expertise so uh, chances are you're probably not going to get these and chances are you're probably not going to get the belt either you can make the argument maybe you get uh shoulders from hydros that have expertise so you use the tier 4 gloves and the shoulders from hydros for expertise and instead of having gloves with expertise you could do that hell maybe in an extreme argument maybe you drop the force of bonus as a bear if you just care purely about fret and you drop the force of bonus and you just go with all the leather pieces if you can get them but chances are you're not going to get even a single one of these pieces they're very rare very hard to get but they are the best in slot uh, the belt is the belt of the 
one of uh, the belt of 100 deaths from Lady Vash in Serpent Rank Cavern, 244 armor, 29 agility, 25 stamina, two belt sockets. It's a DPS belt, but it's also really good for you as a druid tank because of the 25 expertise and all the other stats in the 74 attack power. Every melee wants expertise. It's an enormously powerful stat. Can't stress that enough. Uh, can't stress that out enough. But uh, this item really suits you very well as a tank as well. Uh, rings remain the same. All uh, trinkets remain the same. General leather, leather belts. Staff, you could use the Wind Fury Great Staff uh, with 75 stamina. 50, uh, for dodge rating from a, for a survival weapon. Uh, Earth Warden is the threat weapon. Uh, Wind Fury is more of a survive, pure survival weapon. If you so desire, you can obviously swap your weapons around. That's no problem. And that's kind of it. When it comes to tier 5, like you, do, you don't really gain all that much survivability with this kind of gear. Do you need it? Well, it's kind of weird when you think about how tier 4 and tier 5 work. See, the hardest hitting bosses in the game early on aren't really in tier 5. They're in tier 4. You know, you think of things like Rule as an example. You think of Prince Malkazar. You think of Nightbane. They're actually uh, very hard hitters. What do you have in tier 5 exactly? I mean, Alar can hit you for quite a bit. Sure, that's a problem. Um, Margrim Tidewalker can hit you for a reasonable amount paraphrase all that, but it just doesn't compare. So you should be fine sacrificing survival for fret or not increasing your survival from tier four to tier five and really just focusing on uh, on your fret in this point. But you're still, your armor is still going to increase in tier five with better pieces of gear just because that's how armor works, right? You go from tier four to tier five, tier five has better armor. There is an argument to be made about tier five. I don't buy it like Tier 4 just gives you so much armor and more than makes up for any stat differences that individual pieces have. And that's all there is to say on the subject. Costine here signing out. Stay tuned for more. And do check the list that is linked in the description of this video. It's very useful. It goes in, in detail about the items. It lists all the items that are available in the game in the right order, which is something very important because many of the lists that I've seen for many classes don't do that. So check that list, use that list. It is very useful. And stay tuned for more. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. And if you do like my content, please do consider supporting me via PayPal, Patreon, or YouTube channel membership.